and I've also been doing activism here and there, so it's, uh, I've gotten more involved in political activism on issues of governance and things like that, so that has kept me busy as well. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, the usual writing, music, I've been doing a few projects here and there that uh, I'm yet to announce, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so that's, I've, I've been doing the usual, the usual um, artistry and school work. Okay, interesting. So a few days ago, I checked out you wrote something on uh, social media because I love to see what people are up to. Uh, you wrote a statement about you stepping down, if I was to put it in that way. Uh, and so many questions have been asked. You never gave a reason why you decided to step down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I decided to resign from my position. I was the research and documentation secretary for ZAM, mm-hmm. the Zambia Association of Musicians. So I made that decision, I think, based on, um, you know, my personal principles, because I found myself in a conflict of interest, because ZAM is a body mandated by government, and so there are certain things that we have to do, certain things that we have to incline ourselves to, which I don't personally agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided that, you know, based on my own personal principles, I would rather leave the position and uh, be able to do things as my own person um, instead of representing an organization. Because mo- many times you find people asking you, yeah, I know you are also part of some, so there might be a conflict of interest, but you know, what do you think about this? So if that bothered me, you know what I mean? I want to be able to speak as my own person especially when the stances that I'm making do not necessarily agree with, uh, with some stances. But do you feel stepping down was the right move to do? Because at the end of the day, you need to see what is happening. But do you feel you making your own personal decisions at the end of the day and deciding to say, uh, I'm no longer part of ZAM, is going to help in any way? Well, I, I'm, still, I, I'm still a member of ZAM. Uh, I'm just an ordinary member of ZAM. Because you see, when you're in a position of leadership, yeah. um, when you're in the executive, you can't make decisions on your own. Um, so it's something that everyone or a majority of you have to agree with. Mm-hmm. And so for me, there's just certain things, certain stances that I can't do away with. Um, and so if I feel like my my work in an organization is kind of preventing me from, from, from being able to fully express myself on things that I'm very passionate about, then it becomes a problem for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why I decided to step down. I'll still contribute to them as an ordinary member, but I decided to leave the National Executive Committee. And uh, I do wish them all the best in everything that they're doing. Um, we look forward to seeing um, how, you know, the 30 million has been offered to the artists will be managed by the association and the National Arts Council and things like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the other thing I'd like to find out from you, uh, I don't know if you're aware about uh, the holidays. Are you, are you aware about the holidays? Uh, the long holiday, that's uh, Unity Day. and uh, yes, and Heroes. Yeah. So the other thing that I've always wanted to find out, you being a woman, uh, basically, bringing back to uh, independence, we knew, we know that women played a very big role in making sure that uh, men as well did what they did at the end of the day right there. Do you feel uh, female freedom fighters or women who played a a very big role uh, are respected or rather celebrated as uh, men are? Well, um, not as much, and I think it's obviously because during that time, and it's something that's still prominent today, mm-hmm. you know, uh, women have have been seen as second-class citizens, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of discrimination when it comes to women. Women are not given equal opportunities in society, you know, so it's something that trickles down to everything that we do. Mm-hmm. And so you find, even when we're talking about the struggle for independence, you have our heroes, we love them, the Kenneth Kaunders, the... Um, Harry Mwangan Kumpulas, but you know, you rarely hear someone talking about Mama Julia Tika Monica mm-hmm. or Mama Kankata. Yes, we talk about them, but not as much as we do talk about the men. Mm-hmm. And I can't really blame anyone. I think it's something that society has caused uh, regarding our perceptions about women and how we treated women in the past years. But I'm glad that we are now living in a society where women have voices. Um, I mean, we still have a long way to go. Mm-hmm. But I think we've made great strides in, uh, in, in, in the fight for equality, for gender equality. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think we're, we're getting there. We'll get there one day. All right. So, Mwiza, uh, a quick one. Tell us what's the story behind Beautiful and uh, what uh, inspired you to write a song. Okay. So, the story behind Beautiful. So, um, I, 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 I've been saying that this is one of the most personal songs I've written. Okay. Um, because, you know... Growing up, um, I haven't been um, a typical what people would expect for me to do, you know. 
so usually I, I have my own way of dressing, my own. Um, what what, what, do you, what do you say? Typical. Uh, but which 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 what what do you mean basically? Maybe maybe I can get to find out. Typical you. What what do you mean? Yeah, it's like um, you, you know, as I said, there's a certain way you expect for people to behave. It's not how everyone is unique in their own way, obviously. But as a society, there's certain ways that you expect someone to behave. You expect mm -hmm. me. When you see me, a female, you expect my hair to look a certain way, you know what I mean? And you expect me to maybe put some makeup on my face. So some people expect people not to put makeup on their faces, depending on the situation that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. So that kind of affected me growing up because I'm a person who, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, a fan of who rarely ever find me in, you know, uh, high heels and things like that with a face full of makeup. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a huge advocate for people doing what they want to do with their body. If you want to put makeup, rock it, girl. If mm -hmm. you want to be natural, rock your natural. But, you know, um, people judge me a lot for my decisions that I made um, about my personal appearance and my style and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I would have people, you know, sitting me down, having a whole lecture about, you are supposed, you are not supposed to, as a girl, this is what's supposed to happen. And then it kind of affected me because, you know, being myself, um, is, is, that's my comfort zone. So if you try to take that away from me, then it begins to affect me. So obviously my self-esteem became negatively affected because I began to think I'm not as good as the other people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not yeah. as good as the next girl mm -hmm. because I'm not, you know, dressed like this or walking like this or this and that. So, yeah, my self-esteem was negatively affected. And in the last few years, I've been at a point in my life where I've been getting myself back together, mm -hmm. where I now, you know, and I've, I've reached a point where I'm like, you know what, I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. I am myself, and I love myself the way I am. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you don't uh, feel like I fit into your perceptions or standards, then you know that's that's not really my problem. So mm -hmm. that's why I decided to write the song "Beautiful" because I want everyone to know mm -hmm. that you know every one of us is unique in our own way. All of us, God created us with a sense of uniqueness, mm -hmm. and you have to embrace it. Just because I behave differently from you doesn't mean I'm any less beautiful than you. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that was the inspiration behind the song. I want everyone to know that they are beautiful in the same way they were created. They need to do what they're comfortable doing with themselves, with their bodies, and with their lives. Interesting. Let's get to play the song right here. Is there any, any, any remix that you have to say before we get to your new song, Beautiful Variety on Joy FM? Well, yeah. I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who sent in positive messages. You know, I've, I've been receiving messages of people saying, you know, I used to feel like this about myself, but hearing your song helps me feel better and things like that. And that's really what I want to do. So I just encourage everyone to have a listen. The song is available online, so you can download it on different uh, blogs. Musa Google Beautiful is the title. And I look forward to interacting with everyone. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Musa. Truly appreciate it. Up next is your song. Thanks for having me. All right. So that's uh, Moisa right there. Amazing. And uh, I should make mention, man. She has a new song, which I'm about to play right here on the Joy of Lunch. On the other side, we have so much to talk about. But for now, here's a current brand new single. On the other side, uh, another artist who's doing amazing work all the way from Malawi. His name is uh, Onesmas right here on the Joy of Lunch. Chantaton Empire. 